What is voltage and current? Voltage is the pressure or force that tends to push electrons or charged particles through a conductor and is measured in volts. Current is the flow of those electrons or charged particles and is measured in amps. Voltage is measured as the potential difference between two points, whereas current is measured as the rate of flow through a conductor. As it turns out, voltage and current are proportional. If you have a voltage difference of one volt, across a wire and one amp of current flowing through it. If you increase that voltage to two volts, you will have two amps flowing through that wire. When one amp of current flows through a copper wire, it means that this many electrons are being pushed through a cross section of that wire every second. That's a lot of electrons. That amount of electrons is referred to as one coulomb. If two amps of current are flowing through that same wire, then two times that many electrons are being pushed through a cross section of that wire each second, or two coulombs. Why is copper such a good conductor? It's because of this copper atom right here and this free electron on its outer shell. Let's go ahead and hide these other ones and just focus on that one right there. This electron can easily jump to another copper atom given the incentive. That incentive is a charge or a voltage potential. Once this electron jumps to another atom, that atom has an extra one and will want to push that electron to another atom. Here is an illustration of what happens when a copper conductor is connected to a battery. Assume that there are only four copper atoms in this wire and four free electrons. This is an electron getting ready to be pushed into the wire from the negative terminal of the battery, and this is a positive terminal, which these electrons, which are negatively charged, are attracted to. Once this electron gets pushed in, it knocks these electrons off of each successive atom and then knocks the last electron out to the positive terminal. The first electron that came in is still in the wire. It didn't make it all the way through the wire. It basically just displaced this electron over here. Now you have another electron that's waiting to be pushed into the wire. Once it gets pushed in, it'll knock these electrons, this electron off, that one, that one, and then this one, until now you have two newly introduced electrons in the wire, and you have displaced two over here. So this is what happens. When the electron goes into this side of the wire, it doesn't make it all the way through and come back to the positive side of the battery. It goes in and displaces one electron because this wire is looking to have equilibrium. It still wants to have four free electrons at any given time. So if one comes in, it crowds the other ones out and pushes them to the positive terminal. Another way to visualize this is with Newton's cradle. As one electron comes in on the left, it immediately displaces and ejects one electron on the right. And as you can see, there are still four free electrons left in the wire. Take this 10 inch long piece of 14 gauge wire, for instance. You might have heard that electrons in a wire travel at the speed of light. Well, not really. In fact, the actual electron that enters the left side of this wire would take almost two hours to reach this side of the wire at one amp of current. It's the displacement process or the chain reaction that occurs almost instantaneously. In fact, if you had a wire that was a mile long, as soon as one electron enters this side of the wire, one is almost immediately ejected from the other side because the displacement or chain reaction and the resulting appearance of the electrical potential on the other side occurs at close to the speed of light. What pushes these electrons is voltage. The higher the voltage, the more push there is to displace these electrons and the more electrons flow per second. Think of the height in this scenario as potential energy. The higher the ball in the picture, the higher the voltage and the resulting force there is to push the electrons through the wire. Every conductor has resistance, which reduces the rate of current and thus electron flow through the wire. 
The thicker the wire, the less resistance there is and the more current that can flow through it. The thinner the wire, the more resistance there is and the less current that can flow through it for a given voltage. Voltage, current, and resistance are proportional to each other per Ohm's law, which can be calculated using the Ohm's law triangle. To summarize, voltage is the pressure or force which pushes charged particles, such as electrons, through a conductor and is measured in volts. Current is the rate of flow of these electrons and is measured in amps. Resistance is the opposition to current flow and is measured in ohms. Voltage, current, and resistance are all proportional to each other in a circuit per Ohm's law. I hope you found this video helpful and informative. If you did, please like this video and subscribe to this channel. For more information about this project, as well as recommended breadboarding equipment, best practices, and safety tips, please go to breadboardcircuits.com.